All right, guys, welcome to the live room. Hope you're doing well. Hope you had a nice uh, weekend so far. Let me know if you're here. Who we got? Chris, David. Chris, the other Chris. How you doing? Got messy, messy hair this morning. I feel like I've just woke up. I actually woke up at half past three this morning. So uh, morning, Jerome. How you doing? Good to see you as always. Uh, woke up at half past three this morning in the excitement <laughs> of the markets. I'm just kidding. It wasn't excitement. It was just staying on top of the game. There are certain times where the markets produce more opportunity than others. And uh, I love the way the markets are moving at the moment. I really like the amount of opportunity that we're seeing uh, if you've been in this live room for the last few weeks, you would have seen really, really strong trading opportunities, great um, risk reward profiles, good high probability setups, um, excellent strike rates, you know, really pain free trades. And uh, it's it's a good time. And there's plenty of other opportunities in the market. There's lots of levels, major historical levels being tested right now that just you know, the, the opportunities there and I'm throwing my all into this. You know, I've, I've put a lot of work in, in my trading and building the skills and, and being able to prepare so that when anything like this happens, you better believe I'm going to go out of my way to, you know, capitalize as much as I can, because this, it's a bit like when COVID hit, you know, I was speaking to someone the other day and, um, when COVID hit, I felt like, you know, I was in a position where I didn't, it didn't affect my life. And uh, I remember thinking, it, it was only at that point, that I remember thinking, actually, you know, it's like I've completed the game. It's like I had this final boss. And when I had that realization that I didn't have to, you know, my life was unaffected in COVID, it was a, a really big moment of, of gratitude for the position that I put myself in. But everything leading up to that point, it felt like that was what it was for. And it's say, it's the same now with the trading and the markets and the stock market and the, the Forex market and in my trading and my investing. Uh, I feel like I'm in a position where this is everything I've worked for has been leading up to this point. And, um, and, and now it's time to, you know, to pull the all-nighters and, and really make the most of this and really... Uh, you know, throw myself into it. I want to ride the, the surfboard as, as hard as possible. <laughs> um, so, yeah. That's how I'm feeling at the moment. And I've been <clears throat> doing lots of prep, lots of analysis, lots of stock analysis, lots of market analysis, lots of trading analysis, um, lots of optimization on my on my systems and it's just been, you know, I feel like I'm ready. I feel like I'm ready for it. So uh, if you guys are traders, let me know. If you are in any trades, let me know. If you've got any setups on the radar that you just think look interesting, um, let me know as well. If you want to take a look at anything uh, that I don't look at, I'll happy consider taking a look at that towards uh, towards the end. And uh, I thought I'd stream out to everyone this morning because, well, just that that kind of uh, that kind of mood, basically. That kind of mood. So we've got Gary in the house. Hope you're well, Gary. Um, who else we got? Divdi or Navjot? How you doing, Duncan? Duncan's how's the how's the healing going? All right. So before I get kicked off, as I say, a lot of opportunity in the markets right now. If we just uh, I'm I'm gonna talk through some of the opportunities that we've seen over the last week and what we were looking at, how we got involved, what's next on the horizon. Um, before I do that, we. If you guys are interested in trading and you want to learn more about 
um, these kind of more speculative plays, these opportunities that are presenting themselves in the market right now and over the next month or so. Um, in fact, the next couple of months, really. Uh, we are we do have some announcements of some events and some training. If you're interested in those, make sure you go over to jasongraystone.com and sign up for my newsletter. And I'll be letting you guys know all about that. That's the best way that I can think of to to make you guys, you know, bring you guys up to speed with everything that's on the pulse. Uh, JasonGraystone.com. Just go there, click on sign up to the newsletter, and you'll be good to go. You'll be you'll be looked after. Morning from Barcelona, says Patricia. How you doing? Georgie's here. Mitchell's here. I wish I did lockdown different, didn't have the right mindset back then and wasted my time. Well, the fact that you realise that you wasted some time is not wasted time, right? If you went through lockdown wasting time and then you was none the wiser, that would be wasted time. So there is a, a blessing in every stressing, as they say. Hello from Australia. Hello. All right, so we're going to kick off. You guys got any questions, put them in the chat. If you've got any markets you want to look at, put it in the chat. If you want to join in in discussion, please feel free and uh, we're going to kick off. Before I go on to the Forex market, you know, I did, uh, I posted out an email this morning about the swings of you know, growth and despair, despair and depression and crashing and, you know, and there's a correlation in your life. There's times when you grow, right? And there's times when you hit despair and there's this crisis and you need the crisis. What follows the crisis is growth because you come out of it. Put it this way, you've survived every bad day you've ever had, right? Otherwise you wouldn't be here. So if we know that and we understand that, and we know that actually out of every time that I've felt down, every depressing day, every struggle, hurdle, every loss in the market, every loss in the stock market, every loss in the Forex market, every blown account, whatever it might be, financial worry, debt, relationship problems, whatever it might be, right? Lost your job, lost your business. Out the back of that, when you look back, you will always see it as a positive thing that happened when you look back from a point of growth. So you say, well, you know, what what was the good that came out of that? Or what happened? And you'll say, well, it's good really because, you know, uh, uh, it freed me up to do more of this or you know, I met this person and that, that these opportunities came out as a result of that. Or, you know, I managed to get more crude around my finances. I became more crude around my trading. I was you know, more wiser around my, my risk management and all these kind of good things come out of it. And that's the growth part. Right. And it's continuous because on the next phase, you hit another stress and another crisis and you hit rock bottom again. And it's like, Oh man, you know, I've got to get through this and then you figure it out and you grow again, right? So that is directly correlated in the markets as well. In the world right now, there are crashes and crises and everything's broken, war, politics, economy, inflation, living, right? All this mad stuff going on. It, it just feel I don't know about you guys, but it just feels like the world is a little bit broken at the moment. Even when you're in companies, it's like it's not quite working right. There's like a hundred in the queue if you're on the phone to a tech support or there's, you can't get a new car. You can't learn to drive. There's no driving tests available. You know, it, everything seems a little bit broken, right? And that is normal. <clears throat> and that's been happening for hundreds and hundreds of years. And if you just monitor that in the representation of a graphical chart, like we've got the beauty of doing in today's day and age, which is a growth that's come out of despair in itself, right? The fact that we can just see historically human behavior um, is amazing on a chart like this. <clears throat> but you can see every time there's a crisis, it's followed by growth. And every time there's a crisis, there's growth and gro crisis, growth, crisis, growth, right? And it's the same and same and same, and it'll go up and up and up and up and up forever. 
and it will go up forever. This is the thing. When people say, oh, it's a bit risky. Well, risky for when? When, when are you looking at? What time horizon do you have that makes you think that this is risky? Tomorrow? Or 10 years? Or 50 years? Or 100 years? Right? And the greater the time horizon, the less risk you'll see. Because you actually see, the longer I spend in this market, the, the richer I become, the wealthier I become. Right? So, knowing this is great. Knowing it goes up is great. But there are certain times in the market that are much better <laughs> um, in terms of opportunity to rapidly accelerate your wealth than others, okay? And those times, you might have guessed, what does growth follow? What does growth follow? Tell me. Growth follows crisis, crash, bust, bad times, bleak times, recessions, depressions, financial crisis, right? Now, would you guys say that we are in a growth phase <laughs> or a crisis phase right now in context of the market? Let me know. If, if you're new to this, I recommend you take notes because this is one of my biggest mentors, right? guy called Ray Dalio wrote this book called Principles. He also wrote um, several other books, but this one here, it's a bit of a big one. I read this two and a half times and the biggest takeaway from this book and this book, okay, Ray Dalio is a billionaire, by the way. The biggest takeaway from that book is basically learn from the history. <laughs> learn from mistakes. Learn from what's happened in the past. And where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Whoops. Another book. This book here, which I stole from a library when I was younger. <laughs> is called um, The Great Depression Ahead, right? And this is an, a fairly old book. And again, what does it say in this book? Goes through all the different cycles, what happens, uh, what leads, what causes, all the, when all the stars align, what, what is the recipe? What is the concoction that creates a perfect, like perfect storm ready for the clearing? And... It's about knowing those pieces of the puzzle and, and being able to learn from history and to use those clues, look left, structure leaves clues, history leaves clues, and apply that to your investment and trading decisions. Not to change the entire strategy, but to add to it, to enhance it. Okay, because I always say you always want to be in the market. You always want to be in the market. You always want to have chips on the table. You don't have chips on the table. You're basically tolerating inflation. Okay, but on times like these, there's the opportunity to really, really accelerate your wealth. So I don't just say that as a as a hype. You guys know I'm not a hype hype beast, right? I, I save things. I'm not a doom monger. I don't really talk about this too much. It, you've heard me beating this drum for the last, maybe the last year. And that's because this is it. And I'm doing it. And I want you guys to do it as well. So I'm just sharing what value I'm getting from the market. And I hope that I can pass some of that on to you guys. Dalio did go back. Uh, yeah, ridiculous amount of time. But, but he's got... An obs like an obscene amount of attention to detail and uh, optimization. 
ne we never do learn from the past. It's all repeating itself. Yeah, so basically, we've just got to copy what we're doing. We've, we've just got to copy what we've seen in the past. And there are many ways to do that. One, by dynamically adjusting your deposits into the market via passive investing. Two, identifying undervalued uh, or underpriced stocks, okay, which are high value, underpriced. Lots of that on right now. Three, learn how to apply that to more speculative markets such as Forex market or you know, stock picking or, um, you know, trading, trading stocks, trading Forex. If you can do that, you're going to have phenomenal success. Okay. On top of that, for those of you who are really, you know, ballers, you'd be looking at um, businesses as well, right? Businesses, businesses, people looking to shed, get rid of their businesses at the, you know, sometimes just to, remove themselves of a personal guarantee they'll give you the business so that you take that headache away right um some people were just happy to hand over their business for peanuts keep them employed they continue running it but they just don't want the financial commitment or anything like that right some people are looking just as, as an excuse to retire finally and uh and they'll they'll get rid of the business you'll be buying businesses at bargain basement plus on top of that we've got the baby boomers who make up for a huge proportion of the population okay who own most of the businesses and they're looking to retire so there's going to be you know supply and demand there's going to be an influx of supply with lower demand which means price drops um someone says Peter says, I've been approached by yourself or someone acting as yourself on Facebook. Is that you, Jason? No, I never contact anyone. If you have, if you have been messaged by a Jason Greystone account, it's fake. Okay. Unless like you've messaged me and you've, I've replied and said, yeah, this is my real account. Delete all the rest because, you know, um, Jason J underscore Greystone on, on Instagram or Jason Greystone and all the rest. All the others are fake, I'm afraid, and they'll normally have like a another underscore or another full stop or whatever it might be, right? So just be careful. Okay, so let's um, let's take a look at some of the opportunities right now, right? So this is what I did is I deliberately left on some of the indicators from last week so we could just kind of pick up where we left off. For those of you guys that missed, this was our compression breakout. Look at that, guys, right? Who caught this, by the way? Um, yeah, great. Yeah, Peter Wilson, just please just uh, ignore those or report them, please, if you get a minute. So look, this is the breakout trade played out beautifully. Pound dollar. Um, we'll talk about. We'll talk more about pound dollar in a bit. We had a trend continuation trade, which I posted into the Swing Trader Challenge uh, group, which rolled over. Uh, not at target yet, but about 65, 70 percent of the way there. So that is a beautiful play. This is where we uh, got in on this um what else pound aussie pound yen i haven't really been looking at pound yen we were looking at this level here that ended up rolling over prior dollar yen you guys know my situation on dollar yen looks very good but it's just taking forever because it's on a daily time frame uh and new zealand dollar we've actually well we're at a bit of a decision point on new zealand dollar still you look left major level of uh of support not too keen on shorting 
not too keen on buying at the moment either because of what's happened here. We had this retest. Looked like we were going to push up and then uh, and now we've pushed down a little bit, but we still haven't broke the previous low. So it's still technically I don't want to, you know, I, I definitely don't want to short it, but I don't want to buy it either at the moment. So some great opportunities last week. Now, if we uh, if we look left on the Aussie dollar, I'm bearish this pair. OK, we've got room for movement. I want to look for a, a shorting opportunity. Do I want to short right now? Nah, probably not because we're, we're in the, you know, to, to look at shorting a market, you need to identify the market condition and know we're bearish, which we've done. You need to look at the market phases, um, whether we're in an extension or a retracement. And at the moment, we're in the extension. So if I'm looking to short, it doesn't make sense to short the extension because what happens straight after an extension? We know this doesn't go on forever. One, two, three, four, five, six bearish candles in a row. We get a retracement. <clears throat> no different to the ebbs and flows of the of the crash and crisis and growth um, chart that I just showed you guys. <clears throat> um, pound dollar. Bearish, but uh, this is what I'm talking about when I say we're looking at really nice levels in the market right now. 25, well... 1985 1985 I was 4 years old I was 4 years old when the when the dollar when the pound was this low against the dollar okay and uh I remember when I was about 8 or 9 years old the teenage mutant ninja turtles came out and it was all the rage. And my uncle went over to America and came back with the turtle figures for me. A couple of them and my cousin. And you couldn't get them anywhere. And we were the talk of the school just because we had Michelangelo and Raphael. And uh, that was about 1989, 88, 89. Uh, and I remember, funnily enough, the conversation was around how much money my dad needed to give my uncle to get these uh, my stepdad needed to give my uncle to get these figures. I remember the conversation vividly. And I remember thinking, wow, it's cheaper in the US. You know, it's much cheaper in the US because you could get about, you know, one and a half or half times the amount for the money. So over here, if you wanted the figures, you'd have to buy like two and it'd cost you, I don't know, 40, 40 pounds. Over there, it was like 20, 23 pounds or 20 four pounds for two and I remember thinking wow yeah and that's back then but ultimately what's this uh 40 years nearly 40 years since we've been testing that low and look what happens as we test that low this is what I'm talking about if you don't believe that there's patterns that you can exploit you're wrong okay We've hit, we've bounced off of that zone, literally bounced off of that zone, right? That is what we talk about. That's what we mean when we say that structure leaves clues. History leaves clues. History leaves clues, right? The turtles were great. I was a massive fan of the turtles. <clears throat> Massive fan. <clears throat> um, so that's one example, right? One example. So what does it mean for trading? Okay, this is the monthly chart. That's great for getting a, a kind of bias on the condition of the market and where we're at and forming a thesis and a prediction of what's likely to happen next. The next thing we want to do is make a trade decision. And the way you make a trade decision is to um, form some, basically see what one of your plays, what one of your setups will align with that decision. How can, you know, based on the situation that we're in, how can we place a trade that will align with the overall prediction that you're making, right? And if we drop down to the daily time frame, we can see we've held this zone. Um, looks like we we bounce off of that zone. We may retest that as well. 
But ultimately, at this point, I definitely don't want to short anymore. Okay, I don't want to short anymore. If I show you the euro dollar, this one I did want to short. And if you look left, you'll see you'll see the difference. If we go out to the monthly on the, I'm trying to talk out loud and show you guys as much of my thought process as possible, right? But if we look at the euro dollar, we've actually got room to push down. See this? We've got a tiny little structure shelf here, which might be a blip to push through. And then we've got a major level of structure down here. So this is the zone that you might stop looking for shorts, or I might stop looking for shorts, and maybe even look for a, a, a long at this point, you know, a quick in-out structure-based high probability long. But until we get down to there, we're likely to push down to there. We know these levels are like magnets, right? So what I'm looking at now is a short. And this is what I got in uh, last week. This was a, a swing trade setup um, for me. But if you're now looking to short, it's too late. You know, it, it's the move, in my opinion, this move, all this will do is cause you to be shaken out at the wrong price if you start shorting this now. Um, it's okay to miss trades. It's okay to get the analysis right and be correct and then miss the trade. Um, but pat yourself on the back. Look for the next one. There's tons of opportunity, right? But we had historical um, horizontal structure. We had an angular trend line at the intersection of that structure. We had uh, an even handle number, obviously, a dollar flat, which is very, very powerful level. We had previous structure support. We had um, price testing this 2050 exponential moving average zone. If you don't know too much about those. Uh, don't worry about it. Um, and then we've also had this, <coughs> sorry. Um, we also had convergence as we approach the, the low here. So it looked like a good shorting opportunity. And all we needed then was our entry. Now, depending on what type of trader you are, there was a few different entries. Some of you took like literally tweezer top setups um on the four hour some of you took the lower low lower close candle which was here on the four hour okay and some of you took this retest if i drop down to the hourly some of you guys who sent me the uh the email of your analysis you took this retest here see that beautiful closed out roll over and uh lots and lots of different ways to get involved in that and if you got involved, well done. Nice big move. Now, what is there to do now? We don't want to get involved now, right? We're in it for a start. So I'm in this on my um, Trade Nation account there. So we're rolling over. What do we want to do? I don't want to buy it up. I don't want to take my position off until we retest the lows, the previous low on the daily. So my uh, target for this is down here at 95 60s so we're in this right if you're not in this and you're still looking to get involved really you're going to want to wait for a new break and close below and then another pullback you know it's a quite a long way off to look for a continuation um or you might trade some form of consolidation maybe you wait for another test you know if price does push up again you might be looking at this zone here again to to short. But as I say, there's nothing on this at the moment. So you can just put this aside, move on, you know, and not worry about it. Focus on markets that are producing or are providing opportunities right now. Uh, I'll say this, I say this every week and I'll say it again. Tuesdays are usually the day where the dust is settling a little bit, right? Because when, when every, bearing in mind on Friday, it was non-farm Friday. And what happens on non-farm Friday, in fact, Thursday before non-farm Friday, a lot of the bigger traders just close out positions. A lot of traders just close out the positions. They don't want to be involved in the market during that vol volatility uh, of non-farm Friday. So what happens is all the all the and then on top of that all of the positions closed off for the weekend people don't want to hold positions over the weekend so what happens is monday isn't really a true reflection of you know the market 
uh, as it was. And then Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, the orders start coming back in and the setup start to present themselves and it's kind of finding its way. And then on Wednesday or Tuesday afternoon slash Wednesday is when you're in the trades, you get the setups, you know, you've done your analysis, you've taken advantage of the setups, you're in the trade, you're managing the trade, you take the profits or you take this, hit the stop loss or you manage the trade or you adapt your, your decision making process. And then Thursday, you're basically just analyzing what you did, looking for setups um, to end the week on or for maybe next week. And that, and that's a cycle. That's why I run this live room Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, because that's when most of you, you capture the cycle. Remember, every, everything in trading and investing and everything, right, is cycles. Cycles. Everything's cycles. Everything's patterns. Everything's predictable. So uh, the only thing that isn't predictable is how at any one time the market participants as a, a, a mass market Okay, the collective market will react at any one time. That's something you cannot predict. So, with that in mind, you build a trade plan with a set of rules of board game instructions that allow you to like dictate what a good trade is and what a bad trade is, and then you just you play the rules. That's it. Mitchell Rogers says the only thing unpredictable is ourselves. Yeah. So, any questions? Has anyone got any questions here? I'm streaming out to one, two, three, four, five platforms. And um, I get a lot of emails. I've, I've had 13, uh, over 13 and a half thousand emails in the last six, seven years from traders. And I get them every day. But when I stream out, the questions go dead. <laughs> And I wonder what it is. I don't know what it is, but if 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 it was me, I'd be the annoying person, you know, asking all the questions constantly. The chat would just be me. <laughs> Loads of questions. Um, so previous support should become resistance here. Again, sure, we've got room for room for movement. I'm looking left, a bit like the euro dollar. It's, it's, you know, it's arguably more attractive than the than the euro dollar because if you look left here. Whew, we got this strong um, move down to 85, right? And we're currently trading at 86.68, right? Market's likely to push down to you know, 85.50, right? So lots of room for movement. Now, the market's either going to move one of two ways. It's either going to, if it's going to go down there, it's either going to push straight down or we're going to see a little pullback and then a push down. Okay. Um, unless we completely reverse at this level for whatever reason, but that's not my prediction. Okay. My prediction is we're going to test this level here. So we're either going to push straight down or we're going to see a pullback and then push down. The question becomes if we pull back, where are we likely to pull back to? Can we get, uh, can we use a setup that's in our trade plan to execute the trade and will it, um, Will it align with our risk management rules, our stop loss rules, our money management rules, our um, reward to risk profile rules, our strike rate rules? Okay. Um, and the answer on my trading right now is there's absolutely zero setup right here because what I need is a pullback. And the first place that I'd look for a pullback is right here. Why? Because that's structure. That's the most obvious place for support that should become resistance. This would be the zone. So if we get a pullback here, I can look for a short in this zone. And I would drill down to the lower time frame and I'd look for a retest. I look for confirmation of a retest, a double top in this zone, so that I can, instead of my stops being right up here somewhere, you know, in, in random place, I can get them above an average true range value above structure created by the double top. Does that make sense? If it doesn't make sense, don't worry. You know, it's um, sometimes if you're new, some of this stuff is, um, you know, it, go, it, goes over your, it goes over your head. But if you just commit 
so showing up all the time and listening every day it's like learning a new language you just pick it up it becomes second nature and uh, it becomes subconscious it's uh, it becomes unconscious competence <clears throat> all right so summary right on so far aussie cad i'm i'm bearish aussie cad i'm looking for a short on the aussie cad but i need a pullback up into uh, the first part of 87.31, okay? Aussie dollar, I'm bearish Aussie dollar, but we already had our nice compression breakout last week. Again, lots of room to move looking left. I'd need a pullback, of which I need a pullback back into 6,400, which is a lovely even handle number. Just so happens to be the support looking left. Um, there may be an opportunity. I don't think there is though, because I've done my... Yeah, there may be an opportunity on the 60 minute to get involved quicker. So if we can pull back up to here, you've actually got um, this area here where you can look for a stop loss placement and then look for a one to one or whatever you need to get involved. Pound dollar, not interested. Euro dollar, I'm already short on my swing trading account and there's nothing else uh, looking on this. So hey ho. Anyone got any questions? Everyone get any uh, get value from this these types of live streams? Let me know because <clears throat> I do run these streams every now and then, and uh, I do these every day in my live trading room for the tier one guys. But if you guys don't get value elsewhere, then I'm basically talking to uh, I'm, I'm wasting the uh, the bandwidth. So uh, I, I wouldn't bother if if you guys weren't finding it valuable. But hopefully you are, because the reason I started doing this in the first place all those years ago now is just to stand out from all the crap that you see out there. You know, I see these people promoting scalp trades, one pip in, one pip out, and, you know, the spreads two pips. And you think, you know, you are just literally preying on the vulnerable. And... uh the uninitiated are people that just have no clue they're, they're downloading an app some idiots telling them to buy and sell one pip one pip scalp 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 uh little do they know it's costing them more money to actually trade than they could ever generate profits for um so just you know just be careful and on the other note, I'll just re reinforce or, or re reinstate that I don't contact anyone on social media. You know, I don't, I don't, there's a lot of scam accounts. If you type my name into Instagram, Jason Greystone, you'll see about a hundred accounts, unfortunately, and none of them are me apart from the one that's got 32,600 followers and it's J underscore Greystone and that's it right so that's that's my only account all right <clears throat> i think what we'll do quickly what is it eight ten been going about 40 minutes let's uh let's have a quick coffee break so we'll do a quick coffee refill we'll come back at eight twenty three. we'll put 13 minutes on the clock go and make a coffee go and grab a drink if you're at work, go and hide in a cupboard or something. Hide behind your desk and uh, focus on the next point. I'll leave the stream running. Um, I'm going to put 13 minutes on. We'll come back at 8.23 and uh, I'll catch you guys in a minute.
All right, guys, welcome back to the session. Um, hope you're doing well. If you just joined us, we just had a quick 13 minute break <clears throat> whilst we uh, refilled the old coffee cups and um, reflected on what we've been over so far. We just basically, it's kind of like a dust settling day where we're looking at what played out last week, where we're at in the in the phase, in the cycle of each market and where the opportunities lie next, and then what we've got to do in order to take advantage of those and whether that's wait, whether that's, you know, wait for a certain move um, or a certain price level to be tested uh, or a certain pattern to play out. And, and that's kind of where we're at at the moment. And yes, there's a lot of opportunity, but at the moment, right now, in this instance, there is... Um, you know, there's there's little. Uh, just quickly going back to the the Aussie CAD. If you guys do trade breakouts, compression compression channels, and that, this is a bearish breakout pattern that's forming here. Okay, so that would play in line with the continuation, the straight run down uh, of that bearish prediction that we made on the higher time frame. I just want to bring that to your attention. Um, Aussie dollar, there could be some intraday setups for you looking to short if you're not looking to wait for this pullback up to here. Um, pound dollar, nothing. Euro dollar, already short. That moves well underway. Uh, so we're going to look at the pound Aussie. Um, who's here anyway? I missed any questions? None. No questions. <clears throat> uh, Gary says, had a couple of questions. Um, do you have any accounts denominated in US dollars? Denominated... Uh, do you have US dollar denominated accounts for trading and banking? Is there a benefit this, to this now? Two, when your trading account becomes larger, do you keep it all within the trading account or just a percentage of it and invest the remaining amount? Here's, here's what we do. <clears throat> okay, so let's... Um, how, can I, how, can I, how can I show this? as simply as possible <clears throat> let's see if i can show this as simply as possible and uh we'll go out to good old google draw and we'll pick a scribble all right so of all liquidity managed under investing, trading, stocks, business startups, forex, crypto, right? Right through to 
what I would gamble in the casino. The way that I build um, is very much like this. So if you imagine a pyramid, and I know some of you have seen this before, most of the capital in passives, so if you imagine this to be passive and lower returns, lower risk, lower skill, lower time, lower leverage, lower effort, okay? And up here, this would be high speculation, okay? Um, I structure my liquidity in a way so that by the time you get to my really, really high speculation, it's the minority of the capital managed. Does that make sense so far? Nothing, nothing too difficult to understand until a, po a point that this here might represent um, two percent of my entire capital under management. Okay. Um, and in that 2%, I might have that segregated into big cryptos, smaller cryptos, right? Bitcoin, Ethereum, and then like an ICO that's just coming out. And the higher speculation it is, the less capital I'll put, uh, into it. Okay. And the reason I do that is because I know based on how my entire portfolio performs, I know that what's at risk uh, at any one time, and I can make sure that my entire portfolio doesn't drop by below 10% at any one time. And that 10% is really important, right? So what we want to do is, whoops, what we want, does that make sense to everyone so far before I go any deeper into this? Because this is, this is an important lesson, a really, really important lesson. Yeah. Cool. All right. So let's go. Uh, let's go back to our little drawing here. Then the way this works is up here. The further you get up here, the returns are higher. Okay, the returns are higher. You can make better returns quicker up here. So even though, let's just say you got 50% of your cash in here, okay? And the 50% of your cash, which you've built a solid foundation with, is in passive investments or in a, a large cap stock that's doing, you know, doing well. I don't know why this isn't. <clears throat> writing anymore doesn't like me anymore um and that's where you got all your cash right <clears throat> now let's just say that that's doing let's just say for for argument's sake that's doing seven to ten percent per year okay but up here you're doing 30 to 60 percent a year right what will happen is regardless of how much capital you've got up here, like the ratio split, let's just say you got 50-50, or, or sorry, let's just say you got 70-30. What will happen is the 30 will then become unbalanced because you'll, you'll perform, you'll bring in higher returns up here, which will mean the account balance will grow quicker than this account balance. And at some point it'll overtake it, at which point you've got a unbalanced pyramid. You've got, a, you know, the risk of toppling over. Does that make sense? Because... It's more volatile up here. You've got more leverage up here, which means you can lose more up here, which means, you know, you could jeopardize the entire liquidity. You could take bigger losses than you need to. Make sense? Cool. Good. So if you have a big winning streak here, like when in April 2020, when I did my biggest trading day, all of a sudden you find that this gets out balanced, it outweighs and you get this kind of, it almost squares out. The triangle is no longer like this. It's more like this. Make sense? So that's when it's wise to go through a capital um, balancing process where you're essentially maintaining the percentages 
of your accounts. Now, this is a very complex way of do, of looking at it, but it, for you guys, it might just be your your investment account and your trading account, or it might be your cash account, like your bank account, your investment account, and your trading account. Or for some of you, it might just be your cash account and your trading account. Make sense? The reason I recommend to have a minority into your trading account is because you don't want to risk the, you know, you don't want to risk everything you've got in something that's high speculation that you could essentially lose everything in very quick amount of time. <clears throat> cool. Good stuff. This is why we go, you know, this is why you know, part of the wealth atlas, right? Where you go to the investment section and you go, right, what, how much do I want to put into investing and how much do I want to put into trading? And then what's my cash cushion? And then it will tell me if I just, you know, I'll, I'll know exactly what, what each of those markets that I'm going to put my money into, what that's likely to drop down to at worst case scenario. So like 100 on crypto, you've got to expect the worst, right? You've got to expect the worst drop in crypto. You've got to expect stock trading to go 60%, right? You've got to expect um, even a diversified fund, 30%, even 40%, right? You've got to expect. So what this does is then you can then say, right, okay, well, I'm going to have my cash cushion based on my living costs. I'm going to invest after three months. I've got 744000 or whatever yours might be. And now you can start going, okay, out of the 80%, what of that am I going to allocate to these passive investments or these investments? Okay. And you might have 60% of that in a diversified fund, but uh oh, right? Beware. That means that your total liquidity could drop 19%. Right. So actually, you might want to consider 50, no, 40, right? 25 and now we're in the safe territory yeah and then you go and then i'll diversify and i'll pick some stocks and i'll put 10 percent into stocks in fact i may be going for a bit uh, more in stocks perhaps i'll put 25 percent in stocks as well and then bonds i'll have 10 percent in bonds and then i might have 10 percent in commodities i've got 25 left i can put uh, i don't want anything in gold i'll put 25 in real estate investment trusts and just like that, you've got a clear picture of where your allocations are. You're making sure that you've accounted for all the volatility and risk within each of the of the different markets. And you've also, um, you know, you also know that it's never going to dip below a level that you're not comfortable with or it's going to jeopardize the whole thing. So then we can allocate our speculation ratio and we can say, okay, well, I'm most confident Forex trading. So I could put 60% into here. And actually, you know, my drawdown buffer, the way that I've got my trading, it never goes below 10% in its own. Okay, so I could actually put 60, 70% into here and still be comfortable. Does that make sense? And I know total drawback, 5.56% of total why is it important to know the total drawback of your liquidity, of your, of your net worth, right? It's telling me that it's not likely that my total liquidity is going to draw back less than 5.5%. That's great. That's a good number to know. Even if we hit a 10% drawdown, which is rare. So I'm erring on the side of caution of that as well. I might put 2% into crypto. I might put 10% into stock trading. Okay. Make sense? And then you just have to go through the process of rebalancing this all the time because when you're tracking this stuff and you've got all the charts and everything and, and you, know, you know exactly your numbers, it means that you can keep poised, calm, and whenever you have those big wins or you're outperforming, you go, hold up a minute, I'm going to do a, a rebalance and I'm going to redistribute it all so that I can stay because these will flag up. Right? As these get higher and higher, as you're tracking all this stuff, these will go up and up and up. And, and all of a sudden, one of these will go red and you'll go, uh-oh. You know, imagine what happened to me on the 20th of April 
Um, it didn't actually go red, but it was close. This this went red because it's like most of your capitals in here or a, a large portion of your capitals in here. Make sense? Cool. Um, what was the other question? US denom No, I don't have accounts denominated in, in US dollar. Uh, I may do though. Um, coming Coming soon. I just realized that I was explaining that without you being able to see half of it. So there's the there's the there's the picture here for you guys who didn't see the speculation uh section of that. All right. Um these are the sorts of nuggets that people just don't talk about. These are the type of nuggets that people just don't talk about. And they're the most important ones. The, the most important things you need to know in, in wealth creation. Uh, this is why I, I ran the wealth secret strategy session, right? This? Did anyone come to this? We've got our last one this Thursday. This Thursday, I'll show you all this stuff if you're interested. Uh, you just go to... Um, Click on my bio, my social media, and you'll you'll find it. Um, anyone looking at any setups that they want to share with us? Because as you can probably tell, uh, I'm stalling a little bit because I'm not too excited about the pound Aussie and pound yen at the moment. Um, there's the uh, link in the in the chat there if you want to register for that session um and i might as well post it into there as well there you go <clears throat> oh someone's already posted it in thanks james um i joined after one of these sessions awesome pound cad Look long looks good. All right, let's take a little looky then. Something wrong with this chat here. Ah, uh, Duncan saying, JG, your face is in the way. I should always listen to Duncan first. Sorry, Dunk. Um, cool. Pound dollar, I don't, uh, pound Aussie, I don't think I'm really going to look at. Let's take a look at the pound CAD because pound CAD Andrino has says the pound CAD long looks good. So tell us what you're looking at on a long. This was our short setup here a little while ago. Um, tell us what you're looking at for a long. Tell us a little bit more about what you're looking at. Michael says EuroCAD inverted double bottom on daily. Uh, EuroCAD. I don't actually know what a uh, what a, a, a inverted double bottom is in terms of that tom terminology. So let me know. Euro dollar short says Ollie. Yep. Textbook swing trade that was. Uh, other than the entry, the entry criteria would have differed depending on how aggressive you are. Uh, pound Aussie, I'm, I'm not looking at anything. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna bother with that pair. And pound yen, we've we didn't quite push up to the level we were looking at. We rolled over. We're at a, a quite a major support level at the moment, and it'll be interesting to see what happens. But there's definitely no trade that I would want to take here. I don't want to buy. I don't want to get. You know, I don't want to sell it. It's, it's nothing I want to. I want to look at there. Um, dollar yen. You guys know my stance already. Short. This is looking promising because the dollar yen normally consolidates, breaks out, consolidates, breaks out, and it moves. It's it's quite a directional pair, um, and it rarely ebbs and flows. But we've been hovering around this area here since the beginning of September, which is unlike the dollar yen. We don't normally hover around for too long. So this is showing um, some promising signs 
that that it it will it will play in favor of our prediction okay but it's just a waiting game and if you're paying pay, paying for uh, rollover fees on this <laughs> i feel i feel you uh, but the idea is Dolly Yen, again, talking about opportunities. This is a once in a 20, 22 year, 24 year opportunity uh, back in 98, 24 years. Okay. So not quite as, not quite the, the 40 years nearly from the pound dollar opportunity, but still a long time. Uh, 1998, July 98 is when I left school. I remember it like it was yesterday. One of the best days of my life getting out of that hell hole. Um, and then we've just held this level. So this, this is just a waiting game. I've been banging on about this for a long time. You can go and watch the videos that I posted. Michael says, uh, inverted head and shoulders. Sorry, still early. <laughs> yeah, I feel I woke, I got up at half three this morning. Uh, it's going to be one of those days where I just yawn all day. Uh, Rye Trade FX says cable one hour falling wedge broke out to the upside. Was looking at taking a long, but now pulled back into structure. Yeah, we we uh, we took quite a detailed look at the uh, we took quite a a detailed look at the pound. We spent a lot of time on the last, on the first four pairs. The last four pairs, there's just not really a lot going on. So the daily time frame, as I say, we double bottomed here, and then we looked like we were going to break and close and violate above this retracement, and then we pushed back down. We still haven't violated the previous low, and if we look left, there's no way that I would be interested in in shorting this, right? No way that I'd be interested in shorting it because we are right in this major support zone so if anything this is a level to look for a counter move or a, a structure based long however because of what's happened the fact we've had a a retest and another retest it doesn't look as promising for a long either does that make sense and this is where you want to really make sure that you know the difference between um Like what's a high probability buy and what's a high prob a low probability structure based buy? I wish I knew where the scribble tool was. Where is it? Someone tell me, please. Scribble, scribble, scribble. Is it in here? Ah, oh, it's in here, isn't it? No. No. Anyone? I never know where the thing is. Uh, oh, well, I don't know. But here's the thing. I'll do it with this. And I'll do it with a line. If we push down to this level and we get a double bottom like this, okay, some of you think a triple test makes it even more high probability. But a triple test, you need to bear in mind <clears throat> what is the psychology behind it? What's the pattern behind it, right? Read the price. And a triple test can look like this, or it can look like this. Now, what one would you say is the higher probability buy, and what one is the higher probability sell or not buy? What would you say? I can tell you categorically through rigorous testing that when we violate the retracement like this and then push down for one final test, normally you get a low test wick on this. It's usually referenced as the kiss of death trade, you know, 2618. This has a much higher probability of rallying to the upside. Okay. This one, this one here actually can become more often than not a bearish flag breakout which looks like this. So it's the opposite. So just those subtle nuances, knowing price um, will keep you on the higher probability side of the market. So when we hit a level of structure, if it does this, 
that's a much lower probability than this if you're looking for a quick rally. Does that make sense? Bear that in mind. <clears throat> we've got a big event coming up, by the way, guys. A uh, big trading event. And uh, we're going to be giving you guys a big workbook to work through through the event. It's going to be four, maybe five days. And it's all going to be live. It's all going to be free. It's all going to be very, very educational. Um, so stay tuned. Definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to hear about that. And definitely go to jasongraystone.com and just sign up for the newsletter. And that's the best way for me to send you the information on it. It's the best way for me to um, keep you up to speed, keep you up to date with what's going on, plus all these other opportunities that we're that I'm seeing right now. And I, I'm sharing those daily at the moment. So um, make sure you jump on that. Um, Thomas Latty is in the house. There's a blast from the past. Hope you're well, Thomas. You still doing uh, property? Dale Ibifa. How you doing? I love Ibifa. It's cool. Um, thanks for today. Have to shoot, says Gary. Okay, well, we're not far behind now, so uh, this is the last pair. And for that reason, what would you say this is? Right, look. Look what happened. We had pull down, push back up, pull down, push back up, didn't break and close above the high, push down, boom, right? Bearish flag. So I'm not saying it is a bearish flag, and I'm not saying it's going to break and close below, but it has a lower probability of... I'm primarily a trend continuation trader. When I when I do look for counter trend moves or structure based trades, what I'm looking for is the highest probability setups at certain price levels, all the stars aligning, uh, tight stop loss, good reward to risk profile, very high strike rate. Um, and this isn't one of those, <clears throat> in my opinion, in my plan. I could be wrong, right? I could be wrong. But for me and my my approach, I wouldn't I wouldn't take this as a as a buy right now. <clears throat> so with that said, we've been running on for about an hour and a half. Has anyone got any questions still? Or does anyone want to look at any setups? Uh, that pound CAD that you said is a inverse head and shoulders. I see you. You wouldn't want to trade this conventionally though, because the uh, the conventional way to trade head and shoulders would be a break of the neckline, and then your stop loss below the uh, the head. That's the conventional way of trading it, and then a a one to one. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> that's a, that's a big old risk. One thousand uh, one thousand five hundred pips. No thanks. Euro CAD inverted head and shoulders. Yeah, similar. Oh, there's a lot of reversal setups on all of these, uh, on many of these pairs at the moment. Lots of reversal setups. There's lots of, this is the start of the corrections, right? So, you know, we're nice head pattern on this as well. Really nice head pattern. Um, we've actually already broke the neckline and then we've broken it again. So we've pulled back. You guys could look to buy this up now, um, at least to this high. If you trade these head and shoulders, I'm not saying do buy it. I'm saying that you head and shoulders traders and then the reversal traders that are looking to buy this will be looking to buy now. <clears throat> Conventionally. Thought I'd check in. Uh, got all the time in the world now. The season is closing. Uh, what do you, where do you work? You know, what do you do in IB for Dale? You run a, a bar, restaurant, shop, seat, surfing. Boats and uh, whereabout? Whereabouts in uh, in Ibiza? I I go to Ibiza once a year. I stay in Saint Eulalia or Le Eularia, um, which I love. Nice little marine marina town. Uh, really nice. Um, Gold has been a joy to trade. Definitely made my FTMO a, a smooth one. 
Good. I'm glad it's going well for you. I'm glad it's going well. Very similar correlation to the uh, the euro dollar. Skate or die, says Fing Book. You and Akil really inspired me and my style, says Golden State. Great. Excellent. Surfing, I wish I could. I was not good at it. Skate or die. Yeah, surfing. I, I'm ne I've never really been a strong swimmer, to be honest. I, I've got a massive respect for the ocean. <laughs> I know my limitations. All right, guys, I hope that's been valuable today. Um, if you guys want to join us every day, you can. Just come over to tier1trading.com. It's free for a couple of weeks. You can come in, um, and then you can decide whether or not we've got the resources that you need to take your trading to the next level. Um, if you want to get booked on to the Wealth Secrets strategy session that's taking part on Thursday, it's the final one. You can go and book that uh, with the link that I posted in the chat. If you want to hear about the event that we're running and all the other news and the opportunities, jasongraystone.com and sign up to the newsletter. Promise you you'll get unbelievable value from that. You'll literally feel like you're ripping me off <laughs> if you go and sign up to that newsletter. So all that's left to say um, is... Have a great rest of your day. Be careful in the markets and I'll catch you tomorrow.